object downloading the highest anointing in the universe for ultimate exploits and glory in your generation. May that anointing speak in your life today. The anointing that is above all anointings. May that anointing end your troubles today. Every yoke bows to the highest anointing. Every situation bows to the highest anointing. Every conflict ends at the feet of the highest anointing. That's why he said, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven, of things in earth, of things under the earth. So that it doesn't work in your life doesn't mean it, it will not work. Keep at it. Keep calling his name. Every knee must bow. That's what the word of God says. So if it has not bowed now, doesn't mean it, should, it will not bow. And that shouldn't mean you should give up. Keep calling his name. Keep insisting. And you will see those knees bow. Cancer will bow. Barrenness will bow. Oppression will bow. Whatever the case is in your life, marital crisis, it will bow. Marital spell, it will bow. Loneliness will bow. Poverty will bow. Sicknesses of every sort and names will bow. No matter the situation. I don't know what you are going through. But every knee must bow. At the mention of the name of Jesus. My concern is, do you believe that name to invoke the strength of the name? Do you have faith in the name of Jesus? Do you even believe that something will happen if you say Jesus? There is power in that name. Somebody call his name now. Jesus. Can you say it louder? Jesus. Do you know the meaning of Jesus? It means Yahweh saves. Can Yahweh save you out of that problem? Do you believe that? Can you close your eye one more time and call that name Jesus? Jesus? Can you call that name with a conclusion in your mind and in your heart that as you are calling his name, you are coming out of that predicament? Can you call that name now? Jesus! One more time, can you call that name right now? Jesus! With all your faith, with all your might, with all your energy, can you shout that name right now? I can feel it. You're already out. You are already out. And you've got to believe it. Say with me, I am out of every frustration. Amen. Now, we said in first service and then in second service, we built it on it, we built on it that one of the major reasons why the anointing is not working in our lives doesn't mean that the anointing is not in us. The anointing is in us. First John chapter 2 verse 27 tells us the anointing is inside of you. Colossians chapter 1 tells us Christ is already in you. I think that's the verse 27. Colossians 1 verse 27 or so. Christ in you, the hope of glory. is already inside of you. Christ is already in you and is the hope of what? The hope of glory. The hope of glory. The resident hope of glory. And the Christ in you is not different from the Christ in Apostle Paul. It's not different from the Christ that walked wonders in the early apostles. It's the same yesterday, today and forever. The only difference between you and those who saw him mightily walked wonders and in and through them was their level of submission, yieldedness. They, they were so yielded, so they saw more of him. 
if you will give Jesus a chance, if you will give Christ a chance, you'll be so amazed what he can do through humble you. Just let Jesus have his way. Stop struggling with him. Stop rubbing shoulder with Christ. I know go agree, oh, I know go agree. That's why nothing is working in your life. Two cannot work together except they be agreed. Allow him to have his way. He brought a young man your way to marry. You look at the young man and say, hey, this one. If people, they come propose to me, Adako. You too, you see yourself, say you fit to join people who could call themselves my husband. See me see Wahala. That is a gift from God you call Wahala. And then when Satan packaged his own and brought, he said, hey, you man. He said, look at this guy. My gosh, oh my gosh. Look at his leg, look at his shoes. Wicked snake shoes. And then he comes and lies to you. As he's talking with you and because he's toasting you, he knows what and what will floor ladies. He says, excuse me please, one of my uh, business partners from Bangkok is calling me now. <laughs> so, so you follow the guy from Bangkok and you, your engine knock. <laughs> As he's receiving call from Bangkok, he's receiving another call from UK. And you didn't even know he was faking all the calls. Even the car he drove to come and toast you, he borrowed it all. You don't know they used to borrow cars to go and toast girls. He can take you to a house that is not even his own house. He will just tell his friends, I beg, I'm bringing a babe. You're going to give me a chance. He will fake to be the owner of the house. Until after the wedding, you just realize that this guy is coming from the United States of Karimu. <laughs> because those, those guys who know how to tell lies, they easily capture your heart more than the ones who are honest and sincere. Because the earth doesn't like honest people. One of our mamas, a very wonderful woman of God, my wife and, her and I were with them some weeks ago. She, she told me her story. She was the one who baked our wedding cake. That was 1999 when we wedded. She told me her story. She said that when that so many young men were coming to her, and she was so pretty. Up to now, she's a pretty woman. Now a grandmother. She said when other guys were coming, they were forming because she was one of the happening babes of her time. She was endowed by God with favor and beauty. And she was intelligent.